Hey everyone, welcome to your 15th basic JavaScript video tutorial in which we're gonna take a look at uh, arrays in JavaScript just like objects. So um, in a nutshell arrays is a special version of objects in JavaScript. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just see. So let's say I start with an object but now instead of naming the keys as key name and something I'm going to start off with zero. I'm going to say hello one world. And I'm going to go ahead and use it object of zero plus object of one. And I'm going to say let array is like hello and world. And I'm going to do a similar thing with array as well. Not really ARR. Just like that, and I'm gonna finally console log both array and the object. Hit save. You can see on the right we have very similar output for both. However, for arrays we have like a standard little notation hello world, but for object we have like just like the key value pair. Now the thing is with arrays they're obviously not similar similar exactly because with arrays you get a lot of other methods attached to it other benefits for example you can query for the length of an array you hit save you get two however there's no not, no such thing like object length right you save it you get undefined because if you will if you have a length property here sure you can get that 100 yeah but there's not really inbuilt length for objects and stuff like that. But what I want to show you is basically very down the line inside code, your arrays are actually built on the top of objects only. So there would be a property named length inside this particular array, which is managed by JavaScript to provide how many elements are here. Right? So let's just get objects out of the way and let's just talk about arrays only. So as I showed you, you can get arrays length um with arr.length right you can basically again modify any element just like you would do with the the index of that particular element for example zero stands for hello one stands for world well what does two stands for well it does not exist so let's create it right and let's save you can see we get we now have three elements in this array hello world and two question marks Two exclamation marks sorry so what happens if I skip an index let's say instead of two I created a three hit save we see that it shows us empty well it's just browser optimization in reality if you do a two off you would see that it's actually undefined so actually what undef what browser sends you as empty is actually undefined right so it does not really matter it's just that they, they want to make more sense for developers so they are just using empty instead well what if i use array of 100 uh, let's just console log it hit save you see we get an empty cross 98 that means 98 empty elements again a browser optimization to not ask to show you 98 undefined in a line right but you can see its length has now 101 right so <clears throat> that is the thing now what happens if you do something like array of my key as this well you see that we have got something strange here we have zero one and my key hmm, it looks familiar well you can see that javascript immediately converts it to a regular object kind of a regular object it still has its length property and stuff like that but now JavaScript is storing it as a very regular object instead of an array. For example, if I remove this, hit save, you see we do not get that particular key again, but if you use this particular key, you would see that uh, your object now contains not only the indices, but that particular key value, key name, as well as value name. Now this is a very highly discouraged practice in not only production but only in develop but also in development because of the ways how javascript manages memory and according to types how it stores data i really want to touch on this later on inside 
advanced JavaScript. But for now, let's just remember never to use an approach where you store elements with the, inside the arrays with key names. If you ever need to do this, go ahead with an object. Never use arrays for that. You're gonna lose all the benefits, all the performance optimizations of arrays if you do stuff like this. So yeah, I guess pretty much that's it for arrays. We're gonna take a look at methods provided by arrays in detailed depth later on. But for now, I guess that's quite a good start for arrays for you guys. So that's all for this one and I'll see you then in the next video.